Why are we pulling a vacuum? We must degas the system, which is getting the air out, which that's the easier thing to do, but we also must dehydrate the system. We have to get that moisture out. Even if you're in the desert of Las Vegas, there is still moisture in the air. If you go out in the desert, then the, in the early mornings, you'll see condensation or dew on the plant. So that moisture is still in the air. It's still on the copper piping. And that moisture, especially with peewee oil, will turn to an acid. And that acid starts etching out all the copper in the system. It causes refrigerant leaks. And then that acid will end up copper plating or sticking to the thick sides of the metal or the moving parts of the compressor. It makes the compressor harder and harder to start when eventually you need a start kit. It makes those bearings where the oil can't get in there like it needs to be. And eventually it will cause premature compressor failure. So if you cut compressors open, open, you'll see copper coatings in all these parts. And it shouldn't be there. It's a direct sign of improper dehydration. So... It's the one thing that's the most important. Like we know the airflow is important, but we can fix it later. We know electrical is important, but we can fix it later. But if you don't pull a proper vacuum at the time of installation, it is very, very difficult to fix it later. Because once you have acid in the system, it's doing damage immediately. Yeah, you also have all the, the non-condensables potentially mixed with the refrigerant. And so like even in the immediate, as a technician, you're, you're, the system's not going to work properly. You're not going to have saturated refrigerant in the evaporator coil of an air conditioner to absorb the heat from the from the air crossing the coil and the same thing in the outdoor unit. You're going to have excessively high uh, high side pressures. It's just not going to work properly. But if you pulled a vacuum, uh, but didn't do something like what's called a uh, decay test or standing vacuum test. Basically, after you pulled the vacuum, all of a sudden, like you're turning stuff off and then you're trying to break that vacuum with refrigerant from the system by opening the service valves or by uh, breaking the vacuum with refrigerant from a, a virgin bottle or a recovery bottle or something like that. And it's like you can't do it fast enough. You lose your vacuum because you're not measuring it properly. And uh, all of a sudden, all those condensables got right into the system. So it's like it's a bad practice. And I'll tell you that when I started, I didn't I didn't have the full picture of of how to properly do a vacuum procedure. And so I had to kind of learn that over time. And for me, that was in the classroom, actually, because I was doing stuff that other people were doing out in the field. Right. And then I got in the classroom and I'm like, oh, wait, I don't want to accidentally uh, be providing my students with the wrong information. So I had my business and, you know, and the school I was teaching at. And I started just doing some experiments at night, trying to figure out what's the what's the fastest way, you know, to do a proper vacuum. 